We have discussed about domain hosting servers on our channel, and if you have not seen that video, you should check out our video on Definity Project. However, aside from server, the blockchain technology is about to change what we all know as domain name service. Imagine only paying about 5 US dollars for your domain name per year, or about 50 US dollars for 10 years. This is a lot cheaper than the two-year premium plans from regular DNS providers. That's absolutely incredible, right? Welcome to Coinly YouTube channel. Your number one channel where you learn about tech and blockchain products. Kindly support us by subscribing to our channel and don't forget to turn on the notification to always get notified when we post our videos. Today we are going to discuss about ENS also known as Ethereum name service. You are probably familiar with domain names like youtube.com and coinly.com. This domain names have been around for a very long time, however, the ENS is here to reshape what we know as domain names. So what is ENS? Simply put, the ENS, which is also known as Ethereum name service domains, are the decentralized Ethereum-based naming system. An alternative to DNS also known as domain name system. ENS is an open source, distributed, and community-owned naming system that resides in the Ethereum blockchain. It was developed at the Ethereum Foundation in early 2017, proposed and created originally by the developers by the name Nick Johnson and Alex Van de Sand. An ENS domain essentially allows a user to shorten their alphanumeric wallet address into a domain name format and is often used as an identity on social media channels like Twitter. This domain name address can then be used instead of a wallet address to send funds via an exchange or Web 3.0 wallet. However, at its core, ENS comprises of two main components. Firstly, is the ENS registry, which lives in a smart contract running on the Ethereum blockchain and has a record of all domains and subdomains, detailing the owner, resolver, and caching time to live for all records under that domain. The second important component are the resolvers, which are the actors responsible for translating the ENS domain names into the underlying referenced address or hash. The resolver's task is to reference the domain name and then respond with the resource wallet address. With those two components listed let's map the basic ENS architecture and flow. When resolving an ENS address, you first queries the ENS registry for an ENS address. Then the registry answers you with the resolver that should be queried for the mapped content. And the resolver in return points you to the final address or content in the domain references. Let me put this in a simpler analogy. When you load or query the ENS registry for any ENS address, the ENS registry will then answer with the resolver that has the mapped content and then the resolver will then show you the content of the domain references or the domain address. Right now, ENS is growing in popularity in browsers like Opera Mobile, Metamask Mobile, or any popular browser using the Metamask extension that supports .eth domains. Even on Fleek, ENS domains are gaining a lot of traction. Over 10% of deployments on Fleek are associated with an ENS domain, and over 4,000 sites have added an ENS name already. In case you do not understand what Fleek means, let me give you a brief description. Fleek makes it easy to build websites and apps on the new open web because it is permissionless, trustless, censorship resistant, and free of centralized gatekeepers. By now, you should understand the link between ENS and Fleek. So, why do we think ENS domain is going to be important for Web 3.0? ENS offers a decentralized alternative to address complex resources on or off the blockchain with easy-to-read names. Furthermore, it is also a complementary innovation on our journey as humans to decentralizing websites and application hosting entirely. Instead of having domain name registrars like GoDaddy or Namecheap and DNS servers, ENS has two decentralized components that cut out these middlemen and let the community handle both domain purchase or ownership and resolving. Today in the Web 2.0, most hosting components are centralized domains, dedicated hosting servers, and CDNs. Therefore, ENS is the starting point for changing such concept through a decentralized internet naming. Another interesting part is that, when combined with interplanetary file system, which is a distributed P2P file system, ENS can then begins to open up the windows needed to get rid of the centralized censorship-prone DNS futures of Web 2.0 and making decentralized P2P censorship-resistant websites and apps possible. 
We are not going to drag you deep down the rabbit hole with this. The truth is that the ENS adoption still needs to grow, and P2P content storage or delivery networks are evolving as well to better achieve this. But ENS domains and the idea behind them definitely represent the foundation of what hosting and content serving should look like in Web 3.0. Because unlike the DNS they are decentralized, immutable, censorship resistant, and user-owned or user-controlled. Now let's put these all together. ENS resides in the Ethereum ecosystem, which itself is a big technology. Rather than being an alternate blockchain or network, it exists in an ecosystem in which it can easily interact with most of the decentralized use cases. It also pairs up well with dApps, DeFi, NFTs, DAOs, and wallets. That's not all it can do, it can also integrate all of those use cases under a single address. With DNS, your domain, identity, payments, and bank are all separate things. However, with ENS you can unite at all these things in a single address that becomes not only your site, but also an identity and a bank. Furthermore, ENS has a native token called the ENS token that governs the Ethereum name service. The ENS token will be used to propose and vote for changes to the protocol. It currently have a market cap of about 882 million and selling at the price of 40 US dollars. Will ENS become one of the most important components that will change the way we interact with the web? We can't conclude for now, but the early signs are impressive. If you like this video kindly hit the like button and don't hesitate to support us by subscribing to our channel. Let us know your view in the comments section and turn on the notification button to get notified each time we post an exciting video. See you next time.